back everybody, Lord Chaotic Wolf here, and this is episode 5, season 4 of Titancraft. It is a very gray and rainy morning once again, but we're not going to let that stop us now, are we? Um, a lot of things have changed. Uh, I actually lost quite a bit of footage due to some, uh, my mistake. <laughs> so, a lot has actually changed since last episode. Uh, as you see here now, we have a new coffin bed, a lot better, and you can actually sleep in it with the shut, which I like that. That's really nice. Um, and then I was gone for the weekend. For me, it's Monday, and uh, well, here are my profits, my half from the personal orders and business. Look at that. 37 diamond blocks. And then seven loose diamonds. <laughs> Let's grab our profit box and uh, see what we're up to now. Look at that. Actually, we're going to need to... I, I always make sure I have loose diamonds so I can quick grab something out of the store if I need to. It's always a good idea. So we are no longer poor. <laughs> Uh, let's go take a look at the changes we've got real quick before we get into what's going on in this episode. Or at least what will be in the beginning of this episode. As you can see, I've been terraforming a lot. This wraps down and around. I'm going to start on that side soon enough. But uh, we're really pulling together everything for the graveyard feel. And as you can see, we sprinkled cracked and mossy stone everywhere along with cobwebs. Brought this all the way up. And got stuck in a cobweb, apparently. Sorry about this, guys. I hate this. <laughs> yeah, this is an issue we're going to have to get over is the cobwebs everywhere. As you can see, the cow farm is now gone, too. Because I've replaced it with this here. Oh, whoa. I just got, like, knocked back there for some reason. I almost think a mod just hit me for having too many cows. <laughs> Alright. So, it actually took a while to get the numbers up because I only put two in there. Oh, weird. <laughs> but, um, I think you have to have, like, 30 cows in there or whatever before they start dying from entity cramming. That's how this whole thing works is on entity cramming. It's a one by two spot, you know, one down, one block wide and all that, two up. Uh, at Not this block. Under this block with the button is a dispenser with a bucket of water. That's what floats them up. And the button obviously powers this block, which powers the dispenser. And then we just have a hopper down there attached to this chest. And it actually produces pretty well. I always keep a thing of wheat right here now. And I think I really like adding stairs into walls here. Gives it a nice... Mm, broken feel. I guess. Uh, let's see what else. We also added bubble vaders. No more ladders right here. What do you think about that? I hated the ladders. We're not done with this room down here yet, so that will be, you know, next on the list when it's finished for Bubble Vaders. Um, oh, what else did we do? Oh, we improved the uh, sheep farm, the public wool farm, by adding, uh, we lightning proofed it because I was losing sheep. <laughs> we also added more sheep of every color, so, you know, guys, come on down and use it, make use of it, it's there. I will say it is the only public farm I have. I have some of these others marked not for public use. I really feel like I shouldn't have to mark them all. I'm going to remove those signs. Um, then we added this little bit here to the cactus tower. Tried to make it, you know, kind of like a little uh, crypt entrance, I guess. I'm not too sure how I did on that. You guys let me know what you think, huh? I think it looks okay. But yeah. And then we have something up here started. This, this will probably be a two project episode. Because I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to do. 
the second project. The first project is going to be this ice farm up here. And no, this is not the ice farm. <laughs> this is just snow. I could really make a snow farm up here if I really wanted to, but I have snow blocks and pumpkins, so I have infinite snow if I want it. Uh, but this is the base here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Then it should be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yep. And we have to add another block on either end because this is going to be our ice farm. The whole thing is going to use uh, a couple powered rails, a couple regular rails, a lot of detector rails, two repeaters, two torches, and some redstone dust, and like two stacks of pistons. <laughs> so, we will be getting on that here very soon. I need to go restock the store and get rid of that ugly tree. I can't believe I left a log in there. And then we're also going to do something about this. Uh... I've gotten some uh, words about this, about how most of my farms are now all automatic with the farm district and everything, and the, my pumpkin farm, whatever, kelp farm down in there, which has been finished. We are going to do something about this sugarcane farm. Now, I have a design, my own personal sugarcane farm design I have come up with. It is nine modules in a horseshoe shape and they're stacked three high um, I'm gonna have to tear this entire thing down and then actually build myself out a platform and find some way I'll probably put its own little storage hub right off of it instead of trying to connect it over there where I have st uh, bulk sugarcane storage at. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a long episode. It's gonna be good though because uh, in my eyes my sugarcane farm design is really cost effective. The only thing that is going to be expensive will be the slime blocks which you need 11 for each module. So that will be over a stack of slime block. I'm gonna have to go buy slime. We're gonna have to go make a shopping trip. In fact, we will do that right now. And here we are, guys, in the beautiful shopping district. We. <laughs> so let's go off our checklist first. Undercutters usually sells ink, but hasn't for a while. Because they've been selling these turtle shells that haven't sold. <laughs> they have not stocked any shulkers forever. Or skeleton skulls, which we are in need of. Oh, and also, when we get back to the house, <laughs> I made a new weapon and shield for specifically wither skull hunting. So we're going to have to go take a look at that real quick. Um, Let's see, let's see, where is... Okay, it's this way. Now we gotta go check the redstone store. Oh, thank you, wonderful, wonderful Minecraft gods. Huh, huh? That's over three stacks right there, by the way. Look at that. Oh, we want that too. Oh, nope, we wanna make sure we pay them. <laughs> yeah, I definitely wanna make sure you pay. Um, Now, if there is, there is. So I'm gonna have to break down some more. Um, there should be a yep, crafting table right there. Because uh, we will be doing... Uh, all we need are another 9 subscribers. And I'll be doing the in-game giveaway on the server. So that is slime. That is ink. I literally have a lot of ink. But also it takes so much ink to uh, make stained glass. For every one stack... And eight stacks of glass, or one full stack of dye, colors eight stacks of uh, glass. So, eight and eight is 16, then 32. So you need eight stacks of ink to color a full double chest. Uh, no. 
Yes, somewhere around there. My math is off. I know that already. I can feel it. <laughs> it's early in the morning. I just woke up. Tips. Oh, this is messed up, people. Only have my head with a tip on it. Dude. Okay, I'm sorry. Like, people might think this is funny, but at the same time, this person, uh, right? This is Kendaru, isn't it? Or, or Kitsune or whatever. Leatherbound books and bone blocks. Uh, yeah, it's Kitsu. Okay, this person is super nice. I want you to know that. They bust their ass to stock cheap slime and ink for us. So... Is there an anvil in here? How can you not have an anvil in your shop? One stack for 16 or one diamond for 16? That's actually damn good. Holy crap. Okay, so they don't have an anvil in here. I almost think I don't have an anvil in here either. Nope. Okay. Hmm. We gotta find one. I, I don't want to just leave a diamond. I'm gonna leave name diamond and tell her thank you. So where can we find an anvil around here? Right there. Perfect. <laughs> we also need to go check tool time real quick. I'll, I'll do that off camera. I'm gonna leave the name diamond with a thank you off camera is what I'll do. But since we're here, let's go check tool time. I really feel like this shop has been being ignored. He hasn't done much restocking. We've had a few sales. Uh, he didn't stock the in silk touch picks at all. What? That does not seem right. Sorry for the pause there. But that, that kind of concerns me. Because we have had people take stuff out of there before and not pay. So, so let's see. Now, let's see if Budge is a shop. He's usually pretty cheap with the shulkers. Pre-order on Elytra, thanks. Uh, Pre-order on. Uh, let's see. Shulkers, message me. Oh, that's right. It's only hard of the seas now. And... Okay, welcome back here guys back for a quick progress update as You can see it is fully done. Um, I Am having some issues was having some issues <laughs> with the open backs there and I realized this after I placed the immovable objects the furnaces that I could have just <laughs> used the leaf blocks that I bought and I'm pretty sure I bought all those for that <laughs> <laughs> and then just derped. So we will probably go back through, replace all those with leaves, and then we will get working on the other units. Because after a full four hour test, actually no, sorry, would have been, yeah, about four hours, we got that. So, if you times this by three, there should be almost a full chest between every four hours or so. Probably not. Um, it's hard to get exact numbers on the server because of all the lag and everything. But we will take care of that. <laughs> we might put it on a timer so it just fires off. Uh, we'll probably do an old ethos hopper timer with the stack and five items, you know, a full stack and then five items, but it has to be a full stack of 64. So we can do that. Uh, we also got more andesite. We're gonna have to bring this out more. <laughs> uh, probably another two blocks on either side. But yeah, we will get back here. Uh, as soon as I, I'm gonna get the other two up first before we come back. And then we'll show you how the ice farm has been doing up there. I uh, enlarged that one as well. <laughs> so, hold on tight by the seat of your pants, guys, because we'll be right back. 
Hey there guys, guess what, we are done, <laughs> and I do have to say, Impulse is right, when it comes to sugarcane farms, leaves are a lot better to use, versus, you know, that, <laughs> I do have to go through here, remove all the furnaces, and replace them with leaf blocks, probably, not anytime soon. Actually, I'll do it right now because that's going to bother me if I don't. And we are back, guys. Little dinky storage system. I mean, honestly, if I fill 12 double chests full of sugar cane at any point and I'm not using it, I don't need the rest of it. But we did make this so we can bring it out at least another three rows of these chests. And... Our partner in crime here helped out. Uh, we're experiencing some non-lossless uh, problems. And by simply setting the repeaters on every level to four ticks instead of one, it makes it nice and slow. Bounces them off perfectly. And That's then, the idea, at least. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, then let's look here. Um... Underneath this is where we have our mechanism. I'll just tear up this real quick and replace it. <laughs> um, both these are going into one hopper into this dropper. Compared to the side. I mean, it's the same thing. Still Mango's design. I only use this because it's small and compact. Power rail on top to complete the circuit. Spits it out nicely into a water stream down here. And you can kind of see it through the glass. And right up into the bubble vader and out over the hoppers. Super simple, low tech. <laughs> Unfortunately though, I had to use slabs, double slabs to cover these areas. Actually, I think I could probably replace those now. Let's see here if we can get this done fast enough oh it popped off the rail didn't it damn it it did which means where did the rail go into the dropper <laughs> okay can I get it back on there yep oh I hope that it's going to fire off it did okay we're good which means we can now also do that boom oh I got stuck in a block <laughs> I hope I didn't just screw that all up down there again nope I probably should cover that area and this fill it all in It's sitting like literally right on the side. Come on, come to me. It's not going to. There we go. All right, perfect. Now we don't have ugly double slabs covering our floor. Although slabs aren't ugly, I do love them. Just not when you plan on doing polished andesite. <laughs> so there it is. Not bad. Now we will uh, clean up here. And we will see you guys over at the ice farm to take a look after I fixed it. <laughs> hey there, guys. As you know, we got the sugarcane farm done and done today. And I know I said the next shift stop would be the ice farm, but it's not quite done yet. Oh, there's a phantom coming in from behind. <laughs> oh, they're yours. That's okay. You can handle them. <laughs> Oh, he's up there. Darrell goes somewhere. Playing on a ledge and phantoms are trying to bite me in the <laughs> Oh, so we came over here to do some work on the farm district, kind of get it going again. We uh, kind of took a bit of a break and each just worked on our own things, which I think is a good idea. Because it's good to break this stuff up, right? 
Absolutely. So this is the room that is both storage and villager trading for us here. And now you guys get to see it. We both worked really hard on this. I literally think we spent over an hour just design, talking design and fiddling around before we finally got a solid plan in. And then just more came after that. Once it got started, we both just started going. And look at this beautiful room here. Got the nice arch down the entire center. And then these alcoves on this side for villager trading. And we can have two villagers to a thing. A, uh, what are we going to call them? A I guess a unit. <laughs> stall. Oh yeah, stall. Villager trading stall. Trap doors obviously to get easy of access. Spruce trap doors more to break up all the andesite and stone. That's And then the chiseled stone. And then you have this nice rustic feel on the side here with the spruce log and the chests. Um, I'm sure something will kind of go in the middle here, not in the center between these two, but maybe on the wall. Maybe we could map the farm district and put the map on this wall right here. Possibly, yeah. That would be a good spot for that. Right? It's big enough. Uh, we could also just add some other things around, item frames, put some other stuff in them, whatever. I mean, we'll decorate. I would like to try to add a low-hanging chandelier right here somehow. I will work on that. I don't think it's going to work, though, because you're only going to have, like, one block down with, like, an iron bar or something. And those just don't look right. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to you, people that make wall or ceiling hanging chandeliers that are like one fence post down or one iron bar down those do not work at all <laughs> but so this room is done we're going to be working on the roof next fiddled around with some designs earlier with a mini smokestack and also we're going to be doing stuff like this this is super simple but it adds a lot to the detail it's just four furnaces facing each other with four rails on top and you have yourself an air vent. Bam. Right? Like, there's just so much you can do. And that's the beauty of having two people co-oping on a lot of stuff is you get both sets of knowledge and a lot of the times it combines like it did with this room. This room is a perfect combination of of what me and him both had in our heads, I think. That wall has to get finished. Ignore that wall. <laughs> so It's a work in progress. It is, but it's getting done. It is definitely working and getting done. We're going to come up here and kind of maybe save him if he needs saving. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I turned hitboxes off. This doesn't work without hitboxes on. Juked, bitches. Oh, come back here. Aha, got him. Oh, where's the bow? Where's the bow? Oh, oh. Oh, come on. That bounces right off him. There we go. Spigot sucks, man. <laughs> uh, it's not even spigot. It's literally just the number of people. It's just the number. Of, look at this, guys. That is how many people are AFKing on the server right now. <laughs> That's over half the people on. That's all right. It resets in 20 minutes. Yeah, and they'll be bye-byes. And then we'll have to deal with super speedy phantoms. Perfect. So, um, I think we're going to be nearing our time here soon. So I will make sure to finish this episode with that ice farm. You can actually see it from here. Look at that. That giant blue structure my pointer is pointing at is my ice farm. And he actually pointed out something to me earlier that I hadn't even noticed. That the way I designed it actually has the pistons pushing it 13 high instead of 12 high. Unless we miscounted somewhere. No, because I went down a top row all the way down and got 13 ice. Remember, that's how I knew it was 13. Right. So it shouldn't 
it, it I'll recount. I mean, I will uh, go place blocks down it. I'm. I know it's gonna be thirteen, but yeah, everything's coming together nicely. So we will either have one more check in here, depending on how long we stay up working on this, or we will see you for the end of the episode at the ice farm when I break it down and we can show you all the wonderful ice we're going to have for packed ice for our farm streams and everything else we need them for. Cause I tell you what, I'm sick of having to go to the other world for resources. The more farms we can make, the less we have to go there and the, Oh shit. God damn. Ah, okay. We'll be back guys. All right, here we are, guys, at the end of our episode, and unfortunately, I'm still having some issues with uh, reverberation and, like, secondary audio pickup, so I don't have the footage of me actually breaking down the ice farm, but I will show you what we got, and just remember, it takes uh, nine stacks of ice to make one stack of packed ice. And as you can see, we have quite a bit of packed ice already, and then some singles and leftover ice. You should always just have ice on you because it's portable water sources, not in a bucket. You can also place it wherever you want and break it, pick it back up, and then break it wherever for the water source. Packed ice doesn't melt. But I do believe that is good. Um, it ended up harvesting... 2,400 and some odd ice is what we got from the very first harvest of that. And so my theory is, depending on how much I play during the day, is we can end up producing around 5,000 plus ice a day. So I'm looking forward to that because we want to start selling ice at a loot crate. Got to have the ice box. <laughs> ice box. And yeah, we also added a banner, a big D for Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, Dorelco has a map of all our islands chained together. Big old map. It's real nice. So I had to put a banner up with my name on it. It says Daddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this thing, this thing works wonderful. Love it here. Then we also put up a snow farm last night. <laughs> Super simple. Super simple, you know. Gotta love this guy. Oh, oh, his name is Razzle Gaming. I wonder what that could be. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, we have reached our time, guys. This has been your friendly neighborhood necromancer. Hoping you have enjoyed. And if you have, consider dropping a like, subscribing, and comment. You know, let me know what you guys think. I love to hear back from you guys. Oh, and remember, you can keep up with everything current at Razzle's Gaming on Facebook. See you guys later.